A full game of Eevee with commentary. It's here at last, guys. Unfortunately, since the match lasted over 21 minutes, Shadowplay missed the first couple of minutes of gameplay. But the majority of the action is there, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Also, because I know this question is going to come up, here's my loadout. To start things off, I've taken a little snapshot from later in the game to show who's playing with us today. Uh, you may recognize Tooney, who I'm duoing with from uh, Xenacy. On the other side is Exolotus, also from Xenacy. Uh, Dosups is duoing with Smidgen, both from Team Matchpoint. I pulled some numbers from Paladins.Guru to give a little bit more detail on our rankings. Uh, I want to emphasize that these are casual ratings, not ranked ratings. I find casual rating is a great indicator in a general sense, but when you're talking about you know, the top 100 players, it means a lot less and is much less accurate. Um, these, num these numbers are shared across all servers, by the way. Uh, the rankings are not exclusive to North America. Uh, but yeah, like calling Smidgen rank 110 is insulting, for example. Just, I mean, just look at the team that they're playing for. That's the best indicator. Anyway, the point in putting this together is to show you that everyone here is part of the top 0.5% of players. So there's plenty of things to pick up on here. So I hope you enjoy. So in the beginning here, things aren't going too great. Uh, our team's getting slowly wiped out, and I'm the last one alive. Uh, there's nothing I can really do versus four, except poke a bit, but I won't be able to kill anyone. Uh, the only thing I can gain from this is ultimate charge and credits. Uh, the last thing you want to do in this situation is die right as your team is responding. Uh, dying out of sync is what's called becoming staggered, and it's the worst possible thing that can happen to a team. Uh, so like when one person dies, the best situation is to be capping the point while slowly killing the rest of the team. Uh, wiping them all out at once allows them to all come back at the same time and prepare like an actual assault. But one by one forces them to wait for the last person to respawn again so they can attack as five or else they do what's called trickling uh, which is where they go in one by one and die all over again. So you'll see I'm constantly poking from the other side of the wall. Uh, this is all about abusing Eevee's mobility and preventing any real retaliation. It's important to always know who can punish you for this type of playstyle. Uh, two things in particular that I need to watch for are uh, Shaolin stunning me against the wall as I'm falling, or Makoa anticipating my blink and then hooking me from the air. Uh, both the Makoa and Shaolin player are perfectly capable of pulling this off. Um, that's something to consider too though. If these weren't pros, I wouldn't be even remotely concerned about that threat. A large part of playing smart is recognizing what your opponent is capable of and playing around that. Uh, go as far as you can, you know, squeeze every bit of advantage that you can. Push the boundaries. Then when you die, you know where to draw that line. I often die one to three times in the beginning of a match because I'm testing those limits. At least, that's what I tell myself. Here I blink back after getting caught out by Shaolin. It was mostly for the healing, um, where I planned to then soar away, but Maldamba had a noodle waiting for me on the other side. I dodge in an unexpected direction, which allows me to blink away, but it's just not far enough and I get chased down. Uh, I distracted three enemies for a while, but a few members from my team were already dead, so overall it was a bad play. I get a good shot on Shaolin here, which allows us to play a little more aggressive. Uh, we're still down 4v4 since Ying is dead, but the thing about defending is the closer you are to your base, the more valuable getting a pick is for you. It takes them way longer to get back to the fight, which in a way is like increasing their respawn time. I scout up looking for the next target to take down in hopes of staggering them and I decide Maldamba is a little bit more killable than Nikasi is. He plays this really smart here, uh, he uses the rock to jump higher so my blast damage on the ground is nowhere near him. At this point I'm trying to be the biggest annoyance I can be. Uh, any kills here almost guarantee that we'll win the fight during the overtime since it'd be a 5v4, but I can't seem to close out any of them. I use this bridge here to be a constant threat. It's not even about doing damage or killing people for me here, it's the fact that I exist alone that prevents them from doing what they want to do, which is sit back and dish out damage of course. Uh, sure I can be aggressive and you know hone in for the kill, but if I do I'll die for it. Uh, trading one for one in this situation is just a bad play. I have a lot more influence if I just stay alive. Alright, some of what I'm about to say is for mature audiences, kids if you're watching this next to your parents, you might want to walk away. So this is what makes EV difficult to balance. There's no okay. number on a scoreboard or even in high res's database somewhere that can explain why EV is overpowered. It's her presence alone that is problematic. As a wise man once said, EV is fucking stupid in this game, man. Shit broken as fuck. I mean, it's, it seems like irrefutable evidence to me. The number one player in the world, in the world, guys, says that. I can do that, right? 
I can just make insubstantial claims like that? Yeah, that's fine. Good talk. Anyway, I kind of glossed over a play that happened earlier, and I feel like it really captures exactly what I'm talking about with Eevee. So let's watch again closely. I'm poking at Makoa, and since my blink is back up, I decide to use my free damage button and go for an air shot on the back line. It ends up hitting the Cassie. As I blink back, she rolls comically right into another shot. Here's the dumb part though. Where is the counterplay in that air shot? Can a player really be expected to have to watch the skies from almost any angle every four seconds? The only way to retaliate is to frantically try to shoot her from the air, but Eevee can pull that combo off and aim directly within a fraction of a second. I mean, let's say you, you do manage to hit her. Great. Doesn't matter because she heals 300 health every time she blinks. And she's always blinking. Irez, please help me. Help us. Eevee is broken. Europe knows it. You're going to have to change her at a very core level to fix this. Okay, that got a little too real. Uh, let, let's get back to the commentary. Hmm? You just watched me get spanked because I failed to blink back in time. It's always a bad feeling when blink goes on cooldown and soar and ice block aren't available, but it happens to the best of us. I'm about to get dismounted here by the enemy Tyra. It's a pretty standard play at this level. Uh, dismounting helps bait the enemy into trickling in, uh, which comes back to forcing a numbers advantage for your team. Smidgen, an excellent EV player himself, reads me like a book and times his hook perfectly with my release from ice block. This kind of thing is purely intuition. He noticed I never cooked it all the way previously and made a risky but rewarding play. Are you noticing a trend every time I try to fight on the right flank? I go for a really poor use of sore here and lose my only escape. I can't use verticality to my advantage in this little room. I'm an easy target for this skilled Tyra player. Try not to fight people in their preferred habitat. Play to whatever works to your advantage. Here I meet Dosips on the right flank. My blink combo doesn't really do much here, but thankfully Jurgos lands a great spit, which allows me to hit my shot, followed up by Toonie's burst damage. This kind of focus fire is exactly what you want to aim for in your matches. Since you won't always be able to rely on others to help you out, you may just have to help them out instead. Again, we find ourselves in a similar position, holding high ground to see as many enemies as possible, with plenty of escape routes as needed. Eevee's job, particularly in an organized competitive setting, is to finish off kills. You can poke too, of course, create your own opportunities as Eevee, but you still want to give ample respect to a team that's grouped up, especially one with a Makoa. Cassie gets a little too close for comfort, so I use an unexpected route to escape. Here I regain my blink and vision denial advantage by hiding behind this broken pillar. I still want to control that space over there, but I'm not trying to test my luck. With three of my allies down and just Fernando and I alive, Cassie knows she can safely roll in and try to take us down. This is that numbers advantage I was talking about. Killing both of us here is devastating because now our respawns are so out of sync with the rest of the team. Looking back in review, the correct decision would be Right as three of our allies fall, we immediately rush back to spawn. It may feel awful to do, but it would have been our only chance at making a last stand. I'm not letting Makoa land that same hook twice. I fail my air blink right here, which leaves me as an easy target for Shaolin. I decide the left flank is the place to go this time and flank in from behind. The following kill you're about to see is the ideal sequence you want to aim for. Everything goes right as planned. Notice I use the pillar to deny vision as I back away and escape. Getting kills and getting out quickly is a big part of successful flanking. Play on your terms, not the enemies. During this time I'm scouting for a new target, I'm keeping close tabs on the death timer for Shaolin. Have you ever killed someone, kept on flanking, then died to the same person you had just killed 20 seconds prior? Well, I got tired of that and learned to pay attention to death timers. Shaolin was not prepared to deal with the verticality Eevee brings to the table, and he's paying for it. I'm really scared of staying near Makoa's maximum hook range. I expected him to go for a max range hook and failed the prediction. So it was about that time that I realized I need to GTFO. I'm still watching that death timer, by the way. It's about time for Shaolin to pop his little head out. 
Especially now that he has vision of me thanks to Tyra. Playing based on that, I bait him into leaving his high ground and quickly close in. He misses some really critical shots here and I can safely stay nearby and close in for the kill. A big thing to note when facing Shaolin is to avoid putting yourself in front of a wall. It's easy to forget, but Eevee is dead 100% of the time to a good Shaolin if he goes for the stun planted combo. I wasn't watching death timers this time, but I got lucky on my positioning and I punished Shaolin's bad planted usage. Unfortunately, I take way more damage than I expected to here and die in a really dumb way. The safer move would have been to spam blink quickly for the heal, then follow up with the team. Lucky for me, the team plays well and saves the point. The best time to use ultimates is right after capping a point, as you're almost guaranteed to have enough time to regain your ultimate again. This isn't true for everyone, champs like Fernando and Makoa come to mind because they charge slower than others. Here I have a grand idea of blocking in the Makoa and preventing his team from aiding. Things go extremely poorly as I'm stunned right away, then fly into a fear to my death. It was a great chain of CC from the enemy and I was just simply outplayed. Fernando's still dead and even as Eevee, I don't want to get too frisky without my team nearby. If you don't have a chance to contest the point, staying mounted is a great strategy. The added mobility and situational awareness from third person view helps significantly. Here I begin sneaking the payload while mounted, since horses are really quiet. I was on comms with Toonie, but Exolotus, the Maldamba, was also in the same chat. He heard me say that I was sneaking the payload and quickly turned around to stop me. He wasn't saying anything all game, so I kind of forgot he was listening. I'm revealed here, so I do my best to play safe and not get picked off. I had bad memories from going right flank, so I decide it's best to not try this time. Seeing that Fernando and Tyra are dead, I ping my team to retreat, signaling that no one should extend too far before we regroup. It'll be hard to get that kind of coordination outside of the, you know, top 5% or so, but it doesn't hurt to try. If you play with friends, you will benefit a ton from applying these grouping and staggering tactics. I would even say that that facet alone is enough to jump you from platinum to diamond, but that's just speculation. Anyway, with a couple solid shots from my poke, Fernando is confident enough to charge in and flame down the enemy damage dealers. Now Makoa and Maldamba are easy kills to follow up on without any real damage. The enemy makes a critical mistake by trickling in. With Tyra dying so far outside of the rest of her team, they can't stop us from pushing the payload into their base. This clutch kill on Shaolin is exactly the issue with trickling. It baits the rest of the team into dying as well. If Tyra had been alive still and dropped a mark on me, I wouldn't be able to safely blink in and take shots like that. One by one, they keep making the same mistake. If they had just given up a stretch of ground for the payload and not tried to contest without 5, they wouldn't be in a constant 4v5 situation. While I did die for using this ultimate, it wasn't a terrible one. It allows my team to take down Makoa, the biggest force stopping the payload, and everything is going pretty smoothly. Just when everything is looking perfect, Maldamba pulls out the most clutch ult I think I've ever seen. I feel like I've tried to do this myself before, and it's never quite worked out right, but this was the dream. Cassie gets marked right away and makes a really smart decision to run from the fight. This is why you stay mounted, by the way. Pick fights that benefit you. Just because the enemy is looking you in the face doesn't mean you need to fight them. I choose to play this fight very cautiously, knowing these first deaths could easily decide the point. Since Eevee is way more mobile, unless someone pitches in to help, Tyra can't win this fight. At least not in the open like this. As I finish up the kill, I'm greeted by Cassie. I can't tell if I juked her or if she just misplayed or maybe I maybe a mix of both, but I escape with a sliver of health. I was doing so well with the death timers, but completely flopped when it mattered most. I decide I don't want to waste time fighting Maldamba in an area that favors him and seek something more impactful. Together, we are strong. We are 
I find Tyra fighting Cassie. Taking down Cassie here at a time like this was huge. We now have a chance to contest the point. Here I'm desperately scouting around, trying to find a good pick for the team. We only need one kill to go ham and force the rest. My scouting days are over when Makoa finds me though. Just kidding. Fernando makes a clutch play and shields my ice block. If you have a good Eevee, please do what this Fernando did and come to her rescue in ice block. Makoa is also great at doing this. So many doors are open whenever Eevee gets the proper protection. Look at the work I'm able to do now that I'm still alive. Makoa misses one hook after that, and this is what happens now. He's a free kill, followed by another, and I escape with my life. This ultimate went a lot better in my head. It seems like any time I go for zoning ults this game, they end up being wasted. Here I'm trying to be an annoyance again, and trying to force them to look my way so they have to turn their back to my team. It's the very essence of flanking. My mistake was using Sora aggressively when Makoa's hook was still available. During this critical moment, three people are now focused on me. Not a lot of time, but it was enough for my team to be able to safely kill Tyra and continue the push. Now it's hard to say if my flanking was the cause of the team's ability to stagger the enemy after that, but regardless it was a joint effort. Since we're now closing in on their base, I want to dismount and disrupt their positioning as soon as possible. The best way to do this is to catch them at the door. Jialin goes out of the left door instead, and I close in to kill him before the rest of his team spawns. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this EV gameplay video. I know many of you have been asking for this for a long time, and I'm happy to finally wrap it up. We're closing in on 10k subscribers, which is pretty cool, and I've also got some pretty exciting news that I'll be announcing sometime this week, likely after the holidays. Uh, thanks for sticking around for the whole video. People like you are the ones who help the channel grow. See you tomorrow.